Hey guys, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last time we upgraded Pulsate and Polymer Clay and rebuilt this thing at EV, which allows us to upgrade DML, as well as our power generation over here through numismatic dynamos. And we also started to automate some of the thermal materials, including mana dust and mana infused ingots, lumium, and signalum. As I've previously mentioned, it is a very good idea to get blast furnaces going early, which is why we are going to immediately start off today with two more blast furnace additions. These guys, we are going to run at EV tier, so we'll place it on the end steel line. And this is going to be for our newly automated Lumium and Signalum. However, both of these do require tungsten steel coil blocks, something that we don't yet have. These other blast furnaces over here are Canthal and Nichrome. We do, on the other hand, have tungsten steel automated, and we're up to 500. So I think for a double blast furnace, it's 26 coils we need. Can we get 26 coils? Oh yeah, we'd be left with plenty to spare. Required for this blast furnace, we will need two fluid input hatches. Each one needs an output bus, and each one needs an input bus. So we just need to configure some of these input buses. We need a filter for Lumium, Lumium Blend, and also one for Signalum Blend. Extract Brown, the output bus will be Extract Blue. And finally, we just need two fluid interfaces on the input hatches. The recipe for both Lumium and Signalum also take Primal Mana, which we should automatically be producing here. Quest complete for Tungsten Steel. And we got our first two EV Blast Furnaces. Man, these are the best coils in the game by far. <laughs> What's your guys' favorite coils? I like the tungsten steel a lot. Either this or HSSS. But yeah, these things are very slow. 720 seconds MV. We do get an overclock though. These are running at EV, obviously. But it's nice at least that this doesn't give us hot ingots. So no more strain on the vacuum freezer. First recipe is just finished here for Lumium and Signalum. This should be our quests. I actually have a very bad feeling about these two ingots. These are going to crop up a lot. <laughs> You're going to see over the next few episodes, we're going to be waiting on these things. I have a feeling. And the reason we're going to be waiting is we need hundreds of those ingots to progress through to IV, mainly due to the fact that we need to upgrade all of these energy conduits. If we check the buffer here, we're at 14 million, which you can see in dark blue. Divide that by their transfer rate is 32,768 which comes out to a number of 433, and Signalum is an upgrade from Lumium, so we need a lot of Lumium and Signalum to upgrade these things. Also, I just realized that we still have these things around. Let's get rid of these to begin with as well. <laughs> no need to use these diamond furnaces anymore. All right, so what do we want to achieve today while we wait on blast furnaces? There is still a lot for us to be doing, first of which being cryogenic air distillation. So this multi-block is actually relatively easy at this stage to craft. It's just a bunch of steel and aluminum. And this is also something that we need to run at least at EV. We'll leave some space here since we also need a vacuum freezer for this. I think I, I think we have those on autocraft at this point. We just have the wrong circuits in the recipe. We need to swap from the mainframe it, over to nanoprocessors. And for the cases that this happens when we're in intermediate circuits, for example, we're on only on the third tier four and there's four versions of the tier four circuit. I've actually separated out the molecular assemblers for the patterns that need circuit upgrades in them. It just makes it easier to upgrade in the future when we need to. So we need to start this process by freezing air in the vacuum freezer. We'll also need an air collector, I think at least an EV. Yeah, so this thing, if you give it power, and I think if you just don't block the top slot, then it should automatically give air to this vacuum freezer, which then processes this into liquid air. This we are going to buffer it in a steel drum. I don't think we use it anywhere, it's just to pass the fluid through. And then straight into the fluid input hatch of this cryogenic air distillation. So I went ahead and built out this structure. It's a very awkward number being six long, so there's no center to this. The controller block is off center, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, so once the fillers are set, we get nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and noble gases. These three fluids here are useful around the base. We use them in some of the chemical processing. However, these noble gases, we send through the cryogenic air distillation tower again, and we can get argon, neon, helium, xenon, and krypton. The argon and helium being most important at this stage of the game. So I've, I've put another fluid input hatch here. We do need 53 buckets of noble gases though to air distill. So it has to run quite a few recipes of liquid air before we can get enough noble gases. And in fact, I think the ratio is we need two vacuum freezers to keep up enough liquid air. This is, I believe, the most efficient way to make oxygen as well. So we may as well make use of this and put some fluid storage buses on here. And we'll set these all to low priority. So these fluids will always be consumed first. And we don't need a storage bus on the noble gases here. I guess we'll also need some more fluid storage for the noble gas outputs. We could have also stored all of these fluid outputs in a subnet like we did over here at oil, but I think the quantum tanks are gonna be sufficient. I'm gonna move these on top as well. 
All right, we got everything filtered, and I think the noble gas has just hit 53 buckets here. This is a slow recipe at EV, but any second now, we should be seeing some of the good fluids here. Oh yeah, xenon, neon, krypton, argon, and helium. Let's get our quest for argon. And this also unlocks glowstone doped silicon bulls. So we've got one more blast furnace doing glowstone dope silicon bulls, and we are going to immediately filter these into the cutting machinery. Those are going to be sent into the cutting machines via this little item conduit here, which will drop it into the drawer controller. There are no other uses other than to cut these down into wafers, so there's no point in buffering the bulls, we may as well buffer the wafer instead. And so to that end, that is what we're going to level them at based on. So the recipe for the glowstone doped wafers is just silicon dust, glowstone and argon. And we are just going to level limit these to uh, two stacks of glowstone doped wafers. We'll set the storage monitor. And I did forget to pick up one for the quest. I think the quest wants the silicon bull before we cut it, so let's stop this for a second. Yeah, this is also quite a slow recipe. It's 150 seconds HV. Oh, there it is. This should be our quest. So yeah, these glowstone doped wafers are basically the upgrade to the regular silicon wafers, except now they cut 32 at a time. I don't think this opens up any new recipes for us, it's just a more efficient way to make these silicon wafers. But yeah, the ingot next door, this mana infused ingot, I think I might have mentioned last episode that we were not able to make the compactor yet. And by the compactor, I mean the replacement for this extruder here. No, not this one. This one. <laughs> for all of these gears. I don't know what made me think that we can't make this yet, but we actually can. We can just drop in a recipe for the augment. This is just mana infused materials. And the compactor itself is just a machine frame, which is this thermal device frame, plus some stainless steel. And the rest of this is just some basic stuff. I think I'm actually going to request two of these compactors. Missing copper gears. Quest for the frame. Yeah, I think we're going to make two of these compactors. And we will also make a glacial precipitator. I'm assuming we can make that at this point in the game. There should be two more quests. So we are obviously going to want to automate these. Let's get two named interfaces. One is going to be for gears. One is going to be for plates. I think we'll put them over here next to the atomic reconstructor. It's been a while since I've messed with these, but I think we can have automatic output and input from the same side. If we set these to blue and orange and then enable auto input, that means we can just have our two interfaces on the side like this. Let's see, this one is the plates, this one we named gear, so the gear working die goes in this one. Oh, of course, we need an augment for this. And we don't have any upgrade kits, which do require gears to make, so... <laughs> We're gonna be waiting a while at least until we can make the gears in this one. The other one is the glacial precipitator, which I also want to automate. Although maybe we move these, I don't really like the way these, these are positioned. Yeah, so I switched some things around, the interfaces are now on the top. And we also got this glacial precipitator doing snowballs. The snowballs just output to the top face, which goes into a drawer controller. We are going to place a storage bus on this, on here. This will be set to high priority, since this is main storage for snowballs. We need to also lock this drawer, and I think we just want this, to give this thing max upgrades. No need for the void upgrade on this. All this really costs us is 20 RF per tick, which is, I mean, peanuts, that's nothing. <laughs> However, this does alleviate some stress away from this loot fabricator right here. So this we just made temporarily, just to get the cryothium dust up and going. But this does take pristine thermals to run, and we want to keep as much pristine thermals for our nuclear reactor as possible. Yeah, let's remove all of these, we don't need to make snowballs this way anymore. I maybe should also mention, you may have noticed some extra simulation chambers here at the beginning of the episode. I added 5 more shulkers, taking us up to 15, and I added 10 more endermen, taking us up to 20. And I think maybe one more blaze, everything else should be more or less the same as last episode though. Although we are still not buffering enderpearls, I think it's still filling the buffers. Maybe we need some more endermen, I'm not sure. But we are definitely positive on polymer clay, we're up to 50k by now. I think it was only at like 20k at the start of the episode, so I think we're good, we're good. But yeah, final thing over here is some upgrade kits. We want these on the gear one first of all. And after transferring all the recipes, this is the speed that we're making gears. Much better, I think we can actually augment this further as well. But even just this, I'm happy with. That is <laughs> oh, it's so much better than the, the little extruder over there. And as far as I know, this also unlocks some unique recipes. It allows us to create the, I think it's Restonia gears. Yeah, these things which we need for the Signalum upgrade kits. Also taking a lot of Lumium and Signalum. But once we make a couple of these, I think it takes the Numismatic Dynamos from 6250 as their maximum output. And actually doubles it, so we get 12,500 out of each one. 
We are going to prioritize the conduits though, wherever possible. And it's not possible actually to do half of these at once, since you can't connect different tiers of conduits together. So it has to be all or nothing for these guys. Okay, so at this point in the pack, let's go over where we are, where we're going and... Uh, well, not how we got here. You've seen how we got here. <laughs> it was a relatively efficient journey to where we are at right now. Oh nice, some more tongue state. We'll definitely take this. So yeah, I think we're relatively comfortable saying that we are now in EV tier. So the next major goal we want to work towards is ore processing for sure. And then after that, I think we're going to we're gonna dive into nuclear craft. It's going to get a little bit spicy power wise again. We're going to have to uh, micromanage things at this point in the game. Numismatics are only going to carry us so far. So we do have to make the switch to nuclear craft ASAP. I was looking at some of the quests over here to bring us into nuclear craft, which is this one down here for the first fission reactor. And for a lot of these components like the boron and the hard carbon, even things like yttrium barium cuprate, which all things we need for the reactor. We need a lot of dust outputs that we can only get as chance outputs or special processing of materials. Which is why I want to prioritise ore processing first. If we look at just a random crushed ore here, for example crushed graphite, the chance outputs that we get from pulverising is 14, well it starts at 14% and it's doubled every tier. And I think the maximum it can go is IV, which is why we want to make IV ore processing. So to get us to where we need to be to make ore processing, we are going to have to be able to make IV machinery. This is where the machines start to get white and very strange names as well, like the Blendomatic 9001. <laughs> but yeah, the IV machine hulls take a lot of tungsten steel. And we do have tungsten processing, although to get the tungstate and shelite, we do need ore processing for this. We are getting tiny amounts here from the centrifuge for endstone dust, but just another reason why we need ore processing so badly. Anyways, we can start actually encoding some recipes here. We need the machine casing. And the machine hull is done with tungsten cable, I don't think we have that recipe yet. But this we can coat in styrene butadiene rubber I'm assuming. Yeah. So there is the issue of the circuits, we'll come back to that in a second. However, for the motors, this is now 16x annealed copper cable. Tungsten wire, tungsten steel rods, more neodymium, it's still neodymium at this stage. Something else that we get from ore processing, but we do have a, a bit backlogged, it should be enough to carry us through. And the annealed copper, actually I'm going to bump up a again. I think we have this at 2000. Let's go up to 4000 annealed copper. The piston is no big deal, just lots and lots of tungsten steel here. I think we need the small gear recipe. So I guess this does bring us onto the circuits. The other thing is the robot arms which do, which do take tier 5 circuits. So we've got a decision to make here, do we go with nano processor arrays? Or do we try to skip straight to quantum processors? Both of these are tier 5 circuits needed for the IV machines. However the nano processor arrays do take 4 nano processors, the tier 4s. And this takes 3 of the tier 3s. So this all adds up very very quickly when you're making lots and lots of these. Plus some lumium wire actually. However, if we go up to the cheaper, theoretically cheaper option of the crystal circuit, we are going to have to somehow get our hands on niobium titanium, crystal CPUs which take uh, helium. Oh, and this also requires HSSG. We haven't made that yet actually. Yeah, that may have just answered our question here. We, <laughs> we may just be going for these arrays, which is even more tungsten steel. I hope we're going to have enough for this to be honest. The recipe for lumium wire, normally we do wire 64 at a time, but I think we'll just do these at 16 at a time. Just to be a bit more frugal with the lumium that we have. Okay, I've been putting in all the recipes for the machines, and uh, I wasn't originally going to do this today, but why don't we just build ore processing? Let's see if the game will let us do this. <laughs> so let's start off with four ore washers, assuming we can. Oh man, this is expensive. Look, <laughs> it's 64 tier threes for this, just for four machines. And the ore washers will be the biggest bottleneck in this. We will also need pulverizers. I think we'll go for four of these as well. Although this will be split over four stages. And I think the, the cyclones or the centrifuges is the fastest step, so we'll go for only two of these. Which again is another 96 nano circuits. We're left with 267 tungsten steel. Alright, not bad. That's going to take like an hour to craft though, because <laughs> crafting all those circuits takes a while. We do have to consider how we're going to power this system as well. Obviously we can't produce IV power. But the other question is where do we want to put this? I'm still thinking that I want to keep all of these chunks free. Probably here is a good spot for this. Yeah, I like the idea to put it this way. Oh yeah, this crafting is going to take a while. It's it's basically all waiting on these nano processor arrays to be crafted.
Oh yeah, here we go. Let's do this. <laughs> or processing in Greg Tech is always so fun. So we did get the machines crafted. We're going to build this in such a way that it's easy to expand. All we have to do really is add more item lasers and more machines vertically. And we can basically scale this to as many machines as we want, so long as we have the power for this and can also craft the machines. So we're going to go through and set up the logic for this, but if we take some random ore like iron, the basic premise is that we're going to pulverize, which will give us crushed, and some byproducts, which we have to deal with. The crushed will then be ore washed. We could also thermal centrifuge, but this is too slow. So everything will be ore washed here, which also gives us some tiny piles and stone dust, a bunch of other byproducts that we have to deal with. However, that will give us purified, which will then be pulverized again. More byproducts, but then we get the regular purified versions, which we then centrifuge. And that is the end of the line for our ores, which will then be sent back into storage and ready for the next step. So yeah, step one is to turn ore into crushed ore. We are going to filter this interface for whatever ore we want to process, and we can add basically as many interfaces as we want here. Then we have an item conduit going into an actually additions item interface, which is then connected to an item laser relay. And this we have pointed to our pulverizers, which is the first step in the process. Anything that these are connected to, any adjacent inventory, not just the, the side that the green dot is on, is able to receive items from this interface. So if we, for example, let's test this out with something easy to first of all filter. Let's do redstone ore. Let's put three pieces of redstone ore. I'm going to disconnect this interface though. But we should see it being sent by the laser. That is going to go into the pulverizers. And we have this turned off to down to HV. This little button here is going to save us. <laughs> If we were to run this at IV power, there is no way. I mean, you can see it's pretty fast, but there is no way we can power it right now. Which is why we got the HVCEFs down here and HV Vibrant Alloy Cable. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, this gives us some byproducts, some stone dust and crushed redstone. We're going to take that out on item conduits on opposite sides here. Disconnect from the bottom. So everything will be extract on blue, as always. And eventually we'll have machines on all four sides, which is why we have opposing item conduits and opposite lasers. This has to go into some sort of buffer chest so that we can filter out the the rubbish. <laughs> no, so we can filter out the tiny dust and things. So everything inserts blue here. So now we want only crushed redstone to be sent to the ore washers. So we can place another buffer here. And I think this is where we need some robot arms. I'm going to start at EV robot arms, but that this may have to be upgraded. So this EV arm, we need ore dictionary filters, I think, for this. So this robot arm is going to match all crushed ore, star for wildcard, and that's going to be on whitelist. Import. So all the crushed will be sent to here, where it then gets put into another interface from Actually Additions, which can go here. And we need another laser on this, which is how we're going to send it into the ore washers. Connect it up with the laser wrench. And we need an additional conveyor to take from the chest, which should push it all into these ore washers. So here we get crushed purified, plus tiny piles, plus stone dust, extract with the item conduits on opposite sides of the machine. And we also have an aqueous accumulator here, just with some ender fluid conduit to supply them all with water. Into another buffer chest. So we'll deal with the byproducts in a second, but we want to take this crushed purified, again going to go into another steel chest. So robot arm to import. This filter is going to be crushed purified, white list. And in, by the way, if you want to know what, what this is actually matching here, you can see on the tooltip here the ore dictionary names. Redstone is classified as crushed purified redstone. In fact, you can search JEI for crushed here and it will show you all the crushed. And then within crushed, there is also purified and centrifuged. So if we search for centrifuge, this is everything that comes out of the thermal centrifuge. And crushed purified is everything that's been washed, which is what we are trying to filter here. Another interface with a conveyor. So it should only be crushed purified that gets inserted here. So we don't need the filter on the item interface. One more laser. Oh yeah, we have to set this to import. There we go. So that crushes it again and we get purified this time. So dust pure. You can see on the ore dictionary name there. Plus more byproducts. So it's a very similar story here again. Buffer chest. Item interface into laser. And this time I believe we don't need the double chest here. We just need one. So the robot arm is going to go directly on this item interface. This will be dust pure. Wild card whitelist. Oh yeah, of course, it <laughs> it's automatically set to export, so I think we just thermal centrifuge rare earth there. That's not what you want to do, not here anyway. Yeah, and then from the cyclones, we get more tiny dusts and redstone, the finished product. Alright, so that is the basics down, but obviously we don't want to leave tiny dusts and things building up in here. Okay, let's go back to the first pulverizing step. So out of this, we only get dust regular. As far as I can tell, this is the only chance output that we can get is just regular dust and stone dust. 
So this first one is actually easy. All we need is one more robot arm. We have to be careful not to connect this to any one of these item lasers. And this is pretty much just going to be the inverse of what this is. So this is Crushed Wildstar Whitelist. This one is just going to be Crushed Wildstar Blacklist. So that anything that isn't crushed goes up. And that will just end up in storage. Although we're not going to plug it in yet, just in case we make any filtering mistakes. The next stage, we are getting Tiny Piles and Stone Dust. So there's no point in storing Tiny Piles. As far as I know, only Gallium Tiny Piles have any use. We'll get over to Gallium in a second though. But the Tiny Piles we want to package into regular dust. So I think I'm going to change the way these item lasers are positioned. It's going to stay the same, except the item lasers will be on this side and the item conduits will be on this side of the machine. Yeah, so this way we can put the input chest from the machines on this side. Crushed Purified on the whitelist, which will move on. And we want Dust Tiny to be put into this chest here. We need another few robot arms for this. I'm really hoping EV is going to be fast enough. Transfer rate. So what this allows us to do is put a packager here. This probably means we'll have to move all of this conduit. I think I'll move it out a block. Yeah, we'll move it all out one block. We still have to provide power to this packager, so we need some sort of CEF here. Just make sure this is EV. We're running this at EV. So the input robot arm to this chest is going to be dust tiny. And on the extract into the machine, we don't need any sort of filler. However, we do need to specify supply exact 63. The reason it's 63 is it compresses 9 at a time. And obviously 63 is a multiple of 9, so it will wait till there are 63 items. And that means it only sends enough to exactly package into dusts and won't jam the machine. Configuration 1, and we get cinnabar dust. So the outputs of the packager can just go straight back to our AE system. Again, just going to go into another interface. And in this chest, there will be some dust tiny, so we need to specify dust regular only goes up. Dust regular wild star whitelist is what we want. And we'll place another interface here, I guess. And there's actually one more step that we have to filter after ore washing. A lot of you guys are going to be familiar with indium gallium phosphide. This is something that we need to create high power ICs and qubit CPU wafers. This is something that we need for IV and the tier 6 circuits. However, indium gallium phosphide is only created from indium. Yeah, with indium concentrate and aluminium. And for this, we need purified galena and purified sphalerite. Purified is the version that we get after the ore wash. So that means we need to blacklist it from ever going into this interface and being pulverized again. So all purified ends up here. I think we need to remove this interface here. This one was just the conveyor. We don't need this conveyor on here anymore. We instead need a robot arm. And we want to set a blacklist here for purified sphalerite, purified galena, and also purified bauxite, which is something that we're going to get gallium from. Then everything can go in the, into this item interface here. So we can just pl replace the conveyor on the top side of the chest. And the rest will just go into the next step of the machines. So that means that all purified galena, sphalerite, and bauxite will be left in this chest. This stuff we just want to send back to our AE system, so we'll just use some item conduit for this. Might as well filter, just in case. Okay, so that should just about be all the filtering after ore washing. After the pulverizing is more dust regular. And I think we also get tiny piles out of this as well, right? It's possible to get tiny piles this way. Actually, no, this is just a simple whitelist blacklist situation for dust pure. All dust pure gets sent on. Everything that isn't dust pure is going to be sent to our AE system. Oh, we do have to be careful with this laser. I think this is going to have to go on the side. Otherwise, it, it will push from the chest, push into the laser, and then push into this interface, which is not what we want here. And out of the last chest, we do also get tiny piles this way. So for this, I've just set up another packager. Dust Tiny gets whitelist here. Dust Tiny blacklist this way. And this will just go back to our AE system. The packager can automatically send its contents to the right. And we just need one more robot arm to specify supply exact 63 here. Yeah, so that should be all of the logic set up now. All we have to do now is basically make it faster and upgrade our power situation so that we can run all of these things at full pelt and not just at HV tier. Let's finish off today with a little test here of bauxite ore. We have this from the tier 2 micro miner. Remember, this is one of the ones we filtered out exclusively as purified. So let's see if it all ends up in that interface over there. Everything is unplugged, so this is a very controlled environment here. Nothing is going to be sent to our AE system. It will all just stay in the interfaces like it is here. Okay, you're being washed. I think we'll need some extract speeds actually from the machines, at least when we speed it up anyway. Nothing seems to be stuck so far, which is a very good sign. Let's see if we get the purified box out here. Uh-huh. Oh, that is good. <laughs> that is a good sign. Let's test with some diamond ore. Diamond is something that we'll need to process for the reactor. And diamond should make it onto this next pulverizing stage, which it has. We get graphite and purified. That gets centrifuged. We're getting graphite dust. Tiny piles should be packaged. Amazing. <laughs> It works. <laughs> As you saw with some of those outputs, we are getting a lot of stone dust now. Or we will be getting a lot of stone dust as soon as we hook that stuff up. 
I think at the moment we are storing all of that in drives, but I want to change that and store it in a drawer instead. Because the storage bus is on highest priority, or a thousand priority, it will be prioritized to be stored here first, and we'll make sure that is always going to be possible with the void upgrade, so that effectively there is always storage in here. We don't really want to trash it because we can use it for drilling fluid. Other than that though, there's not much use for it. But yeah, I think we're I think we're done here for today. In fact, you know what? Let's see if we can get any more machines. I wonder if we can get four more ore washers. Huh. Yeah, you know what? Let's let, let's make four more ore washers. Power is right on the edge as well. Look. <laughs> we are right on the edge of power generation right here. That's not good. Signalum upgrade kits might help us here though. We need to be careful when we apply these because that does increase our need for shulkers. However, that takes us from 6250 to 12,500 each. Very, very good deal. But yeah, I'm going to do some more testing with this, watch it a little bit, make sure we don't have anything going where it's not supposed to, and then I'll probably just hook up these interfaces. I think we're, I think we're safe to do it right now. I don't want to call it too early though. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to wrap things up here. Lumium and Signalum have taken a hit, but we are going to be building this up for more energy conduits, hopefully next episode. We also got cryogenic air distillation. These are just going to be building up very nicely for when we need them later on. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much. <laughs> I know it got pretty in-depth there with ore processing, but it's a lot of fun. Anyways, thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.